God, when you provide food for us, we gather it up. When you hide your face from us, we are terrified. When you take away our last breath, we die and return to dust. When you send your spirit, we are created new and all of earth is renewed. We will sing praise to you as long as we live. Come, Holy Spirit, breathe on us. Breathe on us with life-giving energy. Amen. grace and peace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. O oh God, on this day you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending us into, sending us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit, that we may have a right judgment in all things, and rejoice at all times in your peace through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the na native language of each. 
Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the 11, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
restlessness, stir me from blessedness, wind, wind on the sea. You sang in a stable, you cried from a hill, then you whispered in silence when the whole world was still. And down in the city you called once again when you blew through your people on the rush of the wind. Spirit, spirit of gentleness, blow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, spirit of restlessness, stir me from blessedness, wind, wind on the sea. You call from tomorrow, you break ancient schemes, from the bondage of sorrow, all the captives dream dreams. Our women see vision, our men clear their eyes. With bold decisions, your people arise. Spirit, spirit of gentleness, Blow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, spirit of restlessness, stir me from blessedness, wind, wind on the sea. Our gospel this morning comes from John chapter 20. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Judeans, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I have a special treat for you today for our sermon. Um, our text study, our clergy text study, usually meets at Maria's Cafe when we're not in a pandemic. Um, and we've been meeting every week through Zoom instead. No good corn pancakes to go with it. But um, we decided we would record a Pentecost sermon together. And let me tell you, I thought this would make my schedule a little easier this week. Um, but we have recorded it three times. Um, the last recording was yesterday at 9 a.m. So. I'm gonna try my hardest to share this um, and hopefully you all can see and hear it just fine. So. Grace and peace to you, beloved of Christ Jesus, beloved of the Holy Spirit. We are here today preaching Pentecost. It is a Brady Bunch style sermon today. And I want to give you a little background. This group that you see before you, these are my colleagues. We are colleagues together and we typically have a text study. We study the scripture for the coming Sunday and we study on Tuesday mornings, usually at Maria's Cafe on Franklin Avenue in South Minneapolis. This Tuesday at 9 a.m. we began to record and remember what was happening on Tuesday at 9 a.m.? We were just hearing the news of George Floyd's death and what was going on. And that was all kind of bubbling up and it was around our communities and we were all grief stricken and 
what next? We decided then to not just take what we did at 9 a.m. on Tuesday, but then to record again at 9 p.m. on Tuesday, thinking maybe that would be what we'd need for this Sunday. Goodness, this week has unfolded, hasn't it? So now it's 9 a.m. on Saturday morning, and we're trying this again, hoping that this week of so much upheaval, so much chaos, that we might find words, good news to preach into this space. So we come together. My name is Jen Nagel. I'm pastor at University Lutheran Church of Hope in the Dinkytown area by the U of M. And I'm with my colleagues. Let's introduce ourselves, friends. I'm CJ Valenti, Zion Lutheran Church in the Lindale neighborhood. I'm Tom Gustafson, the pastor of Messiah Lutheran Church in the Center for Changing Lives building in the West Phillips neighborhood. I'm Bill Russell at Augustana Lutheran in the Ventura Village neighborhood. I'm Lori Eaton at Our Savior's Lutheran Church on Chicago Avenue and 24th Street. And I'm Jeffrey Schultz. I'm pastor of Bethany Lutheran in the Seward neighborhood on the corner of Franklin and 25th. One thing we noticed um, this morning as we were thinking about what new things do we need to say, um, been thinking about these fires that we hear about in Pentecost and new languages and as our fire is on city, we are starting to hear new words. We're starting to pay attention to new languages. And we recognize that even in this group, we are all white and we don't have, we are missing voices, um, people of color. And so Jen is gonna share with us a, a voice of color. This is a piece that one of our colleagues, Jim Bear Jacobs shared, and he is the Director of Racial Justice for the Minnesota Council of Churches. He's also a Mohican and a, and a pastor, I think in the UCC. Jim Bear writes, so often in the midst of unrest, we make an appeal for peace. But what is meant by peace? What are we asking for? When the unrest is a reaction to blatant racism, when the righteous anger makes you fearful, when our cities are burning, when in the midst of all of this, you pray for peace, it is often a veiled plea for return to law and order. The prophet Jeremiah warns against superficial peace. Peace, peace, they say, when there is no peace. Your peace is based on law and order, which itself is based on the Constitution. This Constitution didn't codify into common law that you were less than fully human. This Constitution didn't have to be amended to grant that you are not property. This Constitution and the systems of law that grew from it work great for you, but make no mistake, it was never meant to protect black and brown people. When white people cry for peace, it is too often an appeal to silence black anger to make room for white comfort. We don't need peace. We don't need things to return to normal. Normal is what got us here. We need leadership that will bravely face the truth of our white supremacist society and commit to change it. We need white people to get comfortable with discomfort. We need many things, but we do not need a superficial peace. We do not need a shallow peace without the depth of justice, without the upheaval of systems created to intentionally suppress black and brown people. That is Jim Bear Jacobs from the Minnesota Council of Churches. So let's take some time to bubble. to bubble where the spirit is speaking to us or causing us confusion and chaos, whatever that is coming to you this morning. Let's take some time to bubble. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Those were the words that George Floyd cried out when the officer's knee was on his neck. The disciples were in the locked room, according to John, on the evening of the resurrection. They were afraid because just days before they had watched their savior and teacher and friend breathe his last from the cross. Another state authorized killing. And in this time of coronavirus, people are dying because they can't breathe. And now with fires burning in neighborhoods, the people in the neighborhoods can't breathe. Where is the breath of life 
in this moment. And I'm struck that we, like the disciples in the Gospel of John, are very much like the first church where we are each individually in our own homes, first isolated by the pandemic in an effort to preserve our breath. And then in the midst of the murder of George Floyd, whose breath was taken away from him before our very eyes. And then the words that Jen read from our colleague, that so often we who are comfortable need not to move too quickly to peace, but to open up and hear the many voices all the voices, um, as did the people on that first day of Pentecost. Years ago, a a teacher of mine looked at the class and he said, really in an excited voice, wonder of wonders, God needs you. And God needs us, yes. And to me, in you, God needs us all uh, to to be sent out. And on Pentecost, we, we hear those words again from Jesus. As I've been sent, so I send you. We are needed to be sent out in the unity that the Spirit brings us in Pentecost, to bring us to a new unity, not bring us back to normal. We don't need to be brought back to the way things were, but brought it, bring us to, to something new, something something that's, that's, that's Holy Spirit born, that, that sees all of us in our lovely and wonderful diversity. It's, it's like uh, uh, Desmond Tutu's wonderful word. There was a whole youth gathering in, in 2003 in Atlanta based on Ubuntu. Ubuntu, I am because you are. And translated, it's like, I cannot be fully human unless you are fully human and treated that way. Mm-hmm. That is a wonderful Pentecost spirit. May we all live into that. And that is so true to the text that the folks gathered in Jerusalem that day are from all points of the compass in Parthians and Medes and uh, Mesopotamians. And it's almost like uh, Dinky Towners, Lindale neighborhood, Ventura Village, West Phillips, uh, it's uh, Seward even. It's like God it wants this message to be shared with the whole world god and we're not perfect vessels for that obviously and the church is so flawed yet god speaks through flawed imperfect vessels somehow we want everyone to know that we are brothers and sisters in the faith god loves them with an undying love And I think the whole world is speaking up right now. In the midst of a pandemic, people are showing up in the streets to speak up and say, this is not okay. And so how do we listen to that? And when we hear this this gospel text and it's Jesus breathing on us, that's something we can do on each other right now. (laughs) But we need to use our breath and, and the words that we have to speak up and to listen to the cries of the people. I'm wondering... Where is God in a city that's burning when we're scared about um, things being out of control? And I will say I am absolutely certain that God does not cause the burning of buildings. God did not cause the death of George Floyd any more than God caused the death of Jesus Christ. But God is at work in and through every single one of those. So perhaps in the burning, we need to think beyond just the property damage that's being done and the loss that comfortable people are experiencing and look deeper and say, what is it that God might be using the burning to burn away in our society and our culture at this time? One of our colleagues, Susan Masters, speaks of growing up in a Pentecostal tradition, and she tells of prayer times, spirited prayer times, where afterward the chair will be up on the bookcase, the table will be overturned, people's hair will be askew, and that was her experience growing up. 
So often we want things in boxes, we want things orderly, we want to know what tomorrow is going to bring. Let's be honest, we do, I do, I know you do. And yet there's something that goes on when the spirit comes that things are left askew. The street is askew right now, our lives are askew, our city is askew. And that may just be the mark of the spirit showing up, reminding us that we don't know all these things, but the spirit is doing something out of the chaos, out of the locked rooms, out of the fear. New creation is being birthed. I'm trusting that. I'm hoping for that. I'm praying for that. New creation is being birthed. And if we can lean into the discomfort of this time, we may be able to be part of that justice that God calls us to. Can I get an amen? Amen. Amen. And thank you. Now let us join in professing our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. On this day of Pentecost, we unite in prayer asking God to send the Holy Spirit on the church.
the world, and all those who are in need. We pray for the church around the globe, for the Eastern Orthodox churches. We pray, come Holy Spirit. For the Roman Catholic Church, we pray, come Holy Spirit. For Protestant and Anglican churches, we pray, come Holy Spirit. For Pentecostal churches, we pray, come Holy Spirit. For evangelicals and independents, we pray, come Holy Spirit. For our own beloved Zion congregation, come Holy Spirit. For everyone who searches for you, we pray, come Holy Spirit. Restore with your breath the whole creation, especially the lands and the waters laden with pollution and the animals whose habitats are threatened. For your earth, we pray, come Holy Spirit. Send your spirits on the leaders of nations, on legislators and on judges, on county attorneys, that the people of the world will benefit from your justice and your peace. For the nations of the world, we pray, come Holy Spirit. Visit all who are suffering, who feel hopeless, and all who face death. This week we pray especially for George Floyd, and his family, and all Black people whose lives have been stolen by those emboldened by systems of white oppression. Send healing to all those who cry out for justice and comfort all those who are too weary to cry. We pray, come Holy Spirit. And let us not forget to pray to restore to health those who have contracted the coronavirus. Uphold healthcare workers, grant jobs to those who are unemployed, and assist researchers in discovering a vaccine. For all those who are confronting the coronavirus, we pray, come Holy Spirit. And bless those who are graduating from schools and universities. Give our youth hope for their future. For our graduates, we pray, come Holy Spirit. And hear also the cries of our own hearts. For ourselves, we pray, come Holy Spirit. Receive our praise for all who for centuries have gone before us in the faith from the first Pentecost throughout Christian history and up to this week. That at the end, we and all the saints will rejoice in your presence. For this we know and we pray. Come Holy Spirit. And so with bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now for the fun part. The peace of Christ be with you all. And all. And also with you. Also with you. Right. Also with you. One, two, three. You can say peace be with you. Peace. One, two, three. Peace be with peace you. Be with you. Peace peace
At this time, we um, will receive our morning offering, um, which is when we would be receiving our morning offering, actually. Um, but uh, I thank you for everyone who is faithfully sending in your pledges um, by mail and um, or on the internet um, through Simply Giving or through our website. Your faithful and continued support means so much. Um, at this time, we will reflect on all the ways that we can offer our lives to God as David plays for us. Let us pray. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts, that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. This is an altar where we worship the one who provides for creation, where we remember we are so small and also we matter so much. And this is a dinner table where we show up honest and empty handed, where there is more than enough and everyone has a seat at the table. Blessed are you, O oh God, the one who plants gardens and rains manna, who multiplies bread and fish for thousands, who eats with outcasts and drinks with women, who is sacred love and life made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took a cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. It shed for you and for all people for forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus has promised his, oh, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father and Mother who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus has promised his full presence in this meal. We don't know how he does it, showing up with bread and wine so we cannot pull them apart. This love is impossible and irrational. It's everything we need and cannot give ourselves. And so we open ourselves to the mystery and hold out our hands to receive the gifts of God. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest and let these gifts to us be blessed. And may there be enough to share on every table, everywhere. At this time, I invite you to share communion. If you are by yourselves, hear these words of promise given for you. If you are with others, please share communion with one another. The body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us eat together.
Christ. <laughs> and now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you, keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray together. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life, and your mercy strengthen us through this gift and faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Some quick announcements before we get to our final blessing. Um, we will have virtual coffee hour after this, so if you can stick around um, for a few minutes, that would be great. Um, in light of everything that's been happening in our neighborhood, today at 3, I'm going to host a small prayer for our neighborhood on the lawn of Zion. If you feel so moved and you're feeling okay, you are welcome to join. Um, please bring a mask and practice good physical distancing. Um, you can bring your sidewalk chalk from your Holy Week bag if you still have some of that too. We can decorate our sidewalk together. Um, and the, the church will remain closed, so please use the bathroom before you come. Um, but just want to do something. If you want, feel like you need to do something today, um, I will be around. Uh, and that's at three o'clock. Um, it is Pentecost, which is the, the birthday of the church. So I thought it'd be fun to sing happy birthday to the church. Um, so I'm going to mute all of you because why not have a little bit of birthday chaos? And on the count of three, we will sing. All right. Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear church. Happy birthday to you. All right, I'm muting you all again. And many more. <laughs> Thanks for humoring me. Um, I want to invite two other people to share some announcements with you. Um, the first one I'll invite is Jess, who um, is home church is Holy Trinity, so she can share a little bit what things have looked like on the ground at Holy Trinity. Um, and it, she's also graduating today from Luther Seminary online. So um, yeah, use your little applause emoji um, as she shares with us an update. Yeah, so my graduation is, you know, less than thrilling these days. Um, it was just gonna be virtual and they pre-recorded, so less than thrilling. Um, so I'm not even, virtually attending. I've been at Holy Trinity the last few days and I'm going back again today. Um, so Holy Trinity is basically is kind of kitty corner from the third precinct um, right behind a the post office that was burnt down Friday night right across an alley. Um, we did not catch fire uh, which is great. They did get some the sprinklers were um, activated because of the heat in the basement. So we now have a pool in our basement until that drains, but otherwise we are left unscathed. We have been hosting um, medic station uh, overnight until the curfew was instituted. But now during the day, we are hosting a food drop-off site and distribution center. And yesterday, and also kind of a workstation drop-off place, we've been accepting tools, battery powered saws and um, screwdrivers and nails and plywood. Yesterday we were overrun with plywood um, to board up buildings and um, help businesses on Lake Street and sending out work crews. We were um, overwhelmed with individuals dropping off food um, and coming over to pick up food. It was a beautiful, beautiful day um, of the community coming together. Our bathrooms have been open, um, are now open from seven to seven. Uh, for people in the community as they swing by to use them. The medic station is open from seven to seven, um, as is the food drop off and pick up. A number of the community members were um, surprised that we weren't, we didn't get drop offs from local grocery stores because we had so much food. If you're so inclined, um, we're actually getting mostly drop offs from the suburbs because there's not much food in the area now. We lost our Cub, our Aldi and our Target were burnt to the ground. Um, and with the public transportation shut down over the weekend, um, our residents aren't able to get out to get food. So they're coming in from the suburbs. But if you're so inclined, toilet paper, laundry detergent, diapers, um, and cooking oil are kind of our greatest needs. We're overwhelmed with beans and bread right now. So no beans and bread. 
um, but I hope to be there later today. Um, but I've usually been inside kind of helping organize the medic station. Um, we also accept clothes, um, you know, nice stuff. But it's been, it, like I said, it's, it was a beautiful day. You can't tell those who are dropping off from those who are picking up. We've also been providing counseling, kind of trauma, immediate trauma counseling um, for folks. So lots of conversations. Um, it feels good to be out there doing something. Um, I was joking earlier that um, those uh, during the lulls, we've had a couple, we had a couple lulls during the day yesterday. Um, some, of our, our, some of our volunteers kind of organized a peanut butter pyramid <laughs> of all the peanut butter that was dropped off. You know, people just want to do something with their hands. Um, so if you feel the need, you're welcome to come over. A lot of other churches, Bethlehem and St. Paul, I know um, have been doing some stuff. So, you know, or just get out there. But I know people just get out there with uh, brooms and dustpans um, and help clean up. So it's safe during the day for the most part. Um, the bad people, <laughs> you know, the people who, um, who are instigating the violence don't come out until after dark. So that's all I have to say. Thanks, Jess. I know Holy Trinity is also accepting financial donations on their website, too. Um, Absolutely. So that's one way you can help. Um, Becca is going to share another way that you can be present in this moment. So, Becca, I'll invite you to unmute yourself. Thank you. Um, and it's really nice to hear your connection to Holy Trinity, Jess. I am, I've been hearing a lot about their work in the last week, and it's it's nice to know that you're a part of that and that we can all be a part of that um, as Zioners too. So thanks for sharing about that. Um, I also wanted to give you an update about, um, many of you know my, one of my biggest passions. Um, I am on the board for the Lift Garage, which is a nonprofit that does car repairs for low income Minnesotans. Um, and our uh, shop happens to be on Lake and Hiawatha, uh, which is a block away from the precinct um, in the heart of this um, hurt and also close to Holy Trinity, the other side of the block there. Um, and uh, the lift, um, I'll start with the good news, the building is still standing. Um, and but it's been it's been a harrowing few days um especially when everything was at, happening at lake and hiawatha intersection um so on we've had volunteers who are staying there and helping um keep the building itself safe um the first night they literally put out fires um and discouraged vandalized um, the second night uh, was the night that most everything went down uh, there, literally on fire. Um, and there were volunteers there that night as well, but um, the Arby's, which is 10 feet away from the lift, started on fire. And it was um, to the point where we sent the volunteers home because the Arby's is so close and the wind was so strong that night that we were like, it's not safe, you have to go home. And we resolved that the lift would, the building itself would not um, be there anymore. Um, and we also have live security cameras. And so we could also see about midnight that it had been broken into and was being uh, vandalized. Um, but at that very same time, um, as like we've kind of lost all hope, there's a fire and it's being vandalized. Um, if you know Turbo Tim from Northeast Minneapolis, he is a partner of the lift that we've done some work with and he wanted to just show up and see how the lift was doing. Um, and he ended up being a angel um, and getting the vandalizers out. Um, so he held them to just the front office um, instead of the shop and the customer cars and the tools. And um, and he also called up Kathy and told her that the wind was blowing the opposite direction and that the building would likely be spared as long as we could keep people out and that he would stay there the rest of the night. Um, so he did and protected the place. Um, and in the midst of all that 
fear and that fire, we were remembering this time of Pentecost and um, which we've heard about as well today. And it's just so relevant um, and thinking about how the breath of the Holy Spirit showed up um, that night to blow those flames away from us and protect us. Um, we did have to postpone a virtual live uh, at the shop fundraiser that very morning. Um, so we did have to postpone a significant portion of our revenue generating plan uh, for the year. Um, and we have a lot more cleanup that needs to happen. And we're certain that the fire has caused damage. We just don't know how much or what that is gonna look like to be cleaned up. Um, we are still doing volunteers at the shop, um, invite only, so don't just show up. You can show up to Holy Trinity. Don't just show up to the lift. Um, customers have called us to tell us how much they are so grateful for us and just wanting to check in on how we're doing. Um, some other customers showed up to help clean up the debris. Um, I will be doing the shift tonight. Um, so I would welcome your prayers. Um, and I have also made um, a additional $100 gift to the lift this week. And I would invite you all to make a gift as well to help us clean up and um, provide, continue providing this essential service. Um, we and Holy Trinity might be two of the only buildings remaining in that entire area. Um, we have a lot of work to do um, physically as well as spiritually and in this whole entire city, um, country. Um, but our customers need us and the city needs us. And um, if you're looking for a way to give, would just really love for you to um, also make a gift there. Um, uh, for what feels right for you. I will also just send the link in the notes here. Um, so thank you all and thank you um, CJ for letting me have a minute. And I know many of you already support the lift already. So thank you so much for your, your gifts and your support of me personally and your prayers. Absolutely. Um, and uh, you know, in this chaos moment, um, important to remember that there are ways that we can show up with our feed and with our money. And to also keep in mind and pray, continue to pray for justice. Justice for George Floyd, justice for our communities of color. Um, there are things that we can do now, right now in the media, and there's important work that we can be doing in the days and months and years to come. So. Um, those of you who got a sermon in the mail this week, I'm sorry, it, it got updated yesterday. So um, we'll send out a new one to you next week. Um, and speaking of worship next week, um, we are going to start a new worship summer, summer worship series. And uh, you can pick up a worship fun kit for the summer this Thursday from 10 to noon. I will be on the church lawn and 10 to noon next Saturday, Jess will be on the church lawn with, um, you can sign out an ELW for the summer because I know you've all been missing your hymnals um, along with some other things. Um, and depending how the weeks go, we'll either start that sermon series next week or maybe the week after. Um, but we're gonna do some fun storytelling, um, dive into the nerdiness of the Apostles' Creed. Um, it's gonna be fun, I promise. So, but we are looking for some storytellers in the midst of all of that too. Um, am I missing anything? No? I feel like I had one more thing to say, but I don't, I don't remember what it is now. So we're just gonna go with it. Um, stay on if you're able for a virtual coffee hour. It's good to be together. And maybe I'll see you today at three. So here is a final blessing for you. At Pentecost, the Spirit of God was poured out upon believers. May the Spirit's flame burn brightly in your hearts. Amen. The wind of the Spirit blows where it wills. May the breath of the Spirit rouse you for life. Amen. Christ said to the disciples, receive the Holy Spirit. May you be enlightened and sanctified in his name. Amen. May Almighty God, Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Let us sing our sending song.
church, go in peace, for Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.